Stephanie Milkey here, a.k.a. Keto Mom, or often called mom, sis, Steffi, daughter, wife, aunt, and friend. Just like many of you, I carry a lot of titles. My favorite title is mom. I should probably say wife, which takes a lot of my time. But let's be honest. If you want to do something and do it well, you will make the time for it. Commitment is hard because we find ourselves overcommitted. But when you practice prioritizing, you will find out what is actually important and what you can let go. With the Keto Mom Podcast, you will learn together how to manage our time, commit to the most important things in life, and I will equip you with the tools you need to feel qualified each step of the way. My name is Stephanie Milkey, and welcome to the Keto Mom Secrets Podcast. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Keto Mom page. My name is Stephanie, and I have a simple thought for you this morning. It's a little late because our family is in the process of moving. So we are packing up. We currently live in Minnesota. We're moving to Florida. And we are um, we're doing this for our workout today. I'm already sweating. Sweating profusely. And I'm thanking CrossFit for all of the incredible workouts that allowed me to lift boxes and move boxes for 24 hours probably. All right, so here's a thought for you today. I was, we were picking up this Penske truck. And my daughter said to me, oh, just broke a box. (laughs) Tell me where you're tuning in from. How is your morning? I have a super simple thought. Uh, My daughter said, hey mom. Uh, Well, and just so you know, if you're brand new, welcome to the page. If you're not brand new, I like to start off mornings with mindset. Uh, My husband and I have a fun little idea for the afternoons because I said, hey, uh, I'm kind of all over the place. I'm going to share something with you in a second. But I told my husband, I said, hey, I'm kind of... um, Babe, want to come say hi? I said, man, I'm kind of bored with myself. What should I talk about in the afternoons? So here's Steve's packing hat. (laughs) We're going to Florida, babe. Are you excited? So excited. What are we talking about? Well, I was... So mornings are for the mind, for a morning mindset. Something that what I was going to share today is something that Eliza said, and you didn't get to hear it yet. But Eliza looked at me this morning as we were picking up our Penske truck, and she said, "Mom, wouldn't it be cool if a smile could heal somebody? Like if I just looked at somebody and I smiled and it would heal them?" And I said, "Amelia, or er, I said, Eliza, it can. Like I think oftentimes we forget the littlest thing that can make somebody's day." You might not be able to physically take away somebody's pain, but when you smile or a small gesture can go a long way. So that's what I was going to encourage you today. I was going to encourage you to do something simple that might seem so simple, but can legitimately change somebody's morning, shift their day, encourage them because a smile can go a long way. And so that's what I was going to say. Why are you like weirdly hiding behind me? Why don't you, why don't you say, do you want to say something? No, I was just, I feel like I got drawn in. (laughs) I know. And if Peter's shadow healed people, then I would definitely think a smile could heal people. That is biblical. Yes. So, all right. If you don't want to say anything, you can keep packing. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I I could say something. I know you could. So, welcome. Uh, Good morning. I'm drinking. um, Oh, thank you, Sarah. Sarah says we're cute. Uh, My husband is a cute one. So drinking my ketones, packing up, I don't want to say packing up our life. It does, it's weirdly doesn't feel like we're moving. Our family travels a ton prior to all of the stuff in the last couple of years where we couldn't travel was, I mean, it, before the pandemic, we traveled every two weeks. We traveled with our company. We traveled with our business. We traveled with our kids all over the world. So when our friends are like, it doesn't really feel like you're moving. It feels like we're we are um, going on a vacation. I like that. Uh, just because you want to know what we're doing, I have said this a couple times on the live, and I'm going to say it again because I think it's so powerful. I oftentimes think that people live so much in fear and so much of what if in the negative aspect, right? What if I don't like it? What if it doesn't work? What if, what if that it paralyzes people? Uh, the whole, you can live in the other way as well, but, but oftentimes I know people don't like change, right? Uh, people are afraid it's, it's a fear. And when you allow that to get into your mind, fear causes people to stay stuck. Fear causes people to not progress. It causes people to live in this comfort zone, even though they might hate it. 
but they're comfortable in the comfort zone because they're afraid that if they step out, uh, they won't like it or they made a wrong decision, right? It's indecisiveness. How do you get over that? You have to just do it. So like this move, right? Like we love Florida. We love Minnesota. All of our family is here in Minnesota. We've traveled a ton. I love that in our situation, we've got technology and we've got different things to keep up with people. Um, but it's like, uh, I was telling somebody the other day, I said, your mind can talk you out of things. It's when you have the peace, uh, the Holy Spirit, you've got the peace in your soul, in your heart to know you should try something, do something. It doesn't mean that you're not afraid. It doesn't mean that you, you're not going to step out in faith, right? There are things that seem super scary. I Listen, if I let my head tell me what we're doing and why we're moving to Florida, my head says, you crazy. Why would you do that? You have everything perfectly fine in Minnesota. And yet, I have this peace about the next step that we're doing for our kids. And so I don't know where you're at, if there's a next step, if there's something that you've been wanting to try, like pray about it, have discernment about it. And it doesn't mean that you're not going to walk. Like there is a part of, I'm super nervous and I know I need to do it, right? Then you have to just, you've just got to do it. How do you get over the fear? You've got to have faith to take the next step. Meaning, um, like one of my mentors said the other day to us, well, to me, to us, as we were sitting on a, on a Zoom, and he said, and I've said this a couple times if you've been on the lives, but somebody has to hear this. I think it's so powerful. If you fail, and whatever failure means to you, if we move to Florida and we decide we don't love it, and we decide it wasn't our best move. Is it a failure? I mean, sure, we, we've we already calculated like what's the worst case scenario and we calculated how much money we would potentially lose. But, but I just believe that the only way you fail is physically quitting if we just quit on life, which we're not going to do. But if we fail, are we happy that we tried? If we fail, is it worth the risk? When he said those two things, I went no question about it, hands down, yes, if for some reason this next season doesn't work out how we think or how we believe, is it a failure? I don't really look at anything as a failure except for a learning lesson. So either A, we win, meaning there's new opportunities, new doors open, like our kids are thriving in the areas that we're believing they're going to thrive in, or A, that's A, or B, we learned a lesson, right? So you almost have to look at, even looking at failure going, what does failure mean to me? Is it worth the risk? If it doesn't work out how I believe it's going to work out, then guess what? I learned a lesson. I can pivot. Like we have so many different options and choices that we can make. It's ourselves that hold us back. It's the fear of like the unknown. And so how do you get past it? You just have to do it. So that's what we're doing we're doing it and we have prayed about it and we have talked to mentors like I believe that when you're making a big decision you pray about it as a family you've got discernment you like what's the worst case scenario and can you handle the worst case scenario if it's a big move right seek mentorship ask for guidance and then you just have to decide a lot of it is a decision and you can do it so uh I really hopped on here just to say, go give a smile to somebody, go open a door for somebody, go say, hello, how was your day? And have a conversation, maybe surprise somebody with some flowers, buy somebody their lunch. Like you can change people's day by a simple act of kindness. And then I kind of veered into, listen, take a big step, make a big move, do the things you're not afraid to do. Like have faith to know that you can do it. Don't live in, live in the what ifs. Listen, if we didn't make this move, I would always live in the, but what if we would have moved? What if we would have tried that? Would it have changed things for our girls? I'm not willing to not experience that to see what happens. I'm not going to do it. I don't like it. I don't like to live in the, but what if we would have tried it? That's it. So I want to say this. Thank you for tuning in. I was talking to my husband yesterday and I said, babe, I said, I'm, what? Oh, I'm, I was telling them, I said, babe, 
I was, I should probably be helping him. I said, I'm so bored with myself. <laughs> I said, what am I supposed to talk about? Because I'm going to continue to go through books and I will continue to encourage you and share my thoughts. I'm learning every single day, right? Um, and then there's times where I'm like, I'm so bored with me. I said, what should I do in the afternoons? I want to do a live in the afternoons. I'll shake up ketones and do a keto tip. But I'm like, man, there's no secret to if you're here for keto or low carb. There's like seven steps that you need to do consistently over time to lose the weight that you have put on over time. So I was like, man, I will give a keto tip. I'll tell people how much water to drink. I will tell people how to eat. I'll help them understand net carbs and total carbs. I can tell them, listen, stop snacking so much. I can say, go move your body, go for a walk, drink your ketones. There's things I can tell you every single day. And I'm always like this, but I'll tell you because it is important. But remember when you're watching somebody and not just me, when you know the next thing you need to do is take action consistently over time. It doesn't mean that you don't slip up. It doesn't mean that you don't have like, oh my goodness, I totally screwed up my food, but consistency over time. It's like, it's like if you're wanting the sexy in life, this sounds funny, but it comes with doing the boring things every single day. No matter who's watching you, no matter the environment that you're in, you get up, you do your mindset, you read, you go for a walk, you move your body, you pack your lunch, you eat the same things. You, you do that until you reach your goal. To get to the sexy, you've got to do the boring consistently over time, right? Now, I say all of that because I told my husband, I was like, man, what else should I talk about? I talk about the same things. And he's like, why don't you get on in the afternoons and, and give people one tip somewhere in the area of the full circle? I like to talk about our life um, as like a full circle or a tire and you've got different spokes in your life and different things that affect your entire life. So I think I'm going to start doing that. Like, Hey, today I'm going to give you a marriage tip today. I'm going to give you a parenting tip. Like I am, we are parenting teenagers and preteens. I love it. And there's a lot of things I've learned today. I'm going to give you a tip for eating today. I'm going to give you a tip on finances, something that my husband and I learned and my hope is, is that some, something will resonate with one of you because I do believe that in order to be the best version of you, to get healthier, to get stronger, you do have to take a look at the other areas of your life and work on those as well. And it's switching one thing at a time. It's, oh my goodness, I had no idea about that and finances, or I didn't know that little tip about money. If I fix that... I'll be less stressed and I will do less stress eating. Oh, you know what? I have teenagers too. I ha we have four girls and we are walking through some great teenage years. So that's what I'm going to do is just hop on and give you a tip on your life. Uh, listen, I'm 40 and in the Bible, the Bible says that when you have gray hair, it is a crown of glory and wisdom. So I, and I have to tell people when my gray hairs are coming through strong, Listen, this is called wisdom hairs. I pray for wisdom. I ask for wisdom and they're coming through strong. I'm going to share it with you. Now, am I the wisest person in the world? I'm 40. So I'm not 60. I'm not 80, but I have lived a great life and I am a, and I'm a learner. So I'm going to share you with you the things that we've learned and you can take it for what it's worth. I will always give you keto tips. If you're brand new, you can go to ketomomsecrets.com, click on recipes, Click on, click on how to get started. You can always send me a message. You can ask questions below. Listen, Cindy's way wiser than me. Cindy is 53. She even told you. I did not tell you. Um, but anyways, I want to say this. Thank you for tuning in. Your presence matters. I would love for you to press the share button. It allows other people to join the Keto Mom community. And the last thing I'm going to say is this. Um, oh, you're so sweet, Andrea. She says, I don't look 40. Movement, drink your water, drink your ketones. There's so many things that help with that. Uh, and less stress. Stress ages people. How do you be less stressed? You work on your mindset. Listen, people need people. In the last 24 hours, I have, have two friends who I love them both, have really some 
tragic uh, health news that, that I hate for both of them. And we're praying for both of them. And one of the girls said, listen, I need you. I need you. I need people. I need, I need a community of people around me while I'm walking through this. And I want you to know something. People need people. And this goes back to the very beginning of what I said. You don't know what people are going through in the day and they might seem fine, but you don't know what's actually inside. You don't know if they're struggling in their marriage, if they've had a health, like a bad health report, which both of these ladies did. You don't know if they are struggling with their children. You don't know if they've got their own mental battle and a smile, buying somebody lunch. Just if somebody pops into your mind, just so you know, that isn't by accident. I believe it's God saying to you, hey, can you give this person a call? Hey, can you send this person a message? Why don't you check on this person? There's a reason why people pop into your mind or why you cross them at the grocery store or you see them at the gas station or you run into them at your kid's school. Don't be in such a hurry that you miss an opportunity to bless somebody else. Like, I, and I'm guilty of this. As you're walking through, acknowledge people, smile at them, say hello, ask how they're doing. Like if you just take a couple seconds and just listen to people, you can kind of tell where they're at and then be a blessing to somebody else. So thank you for tuning in. Have a wonderful day. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm here to help and follow us on our journey because we are moving to Florida. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Bye everybody.